Thank you for being here. Welcome, guys. Today, John, Pat, and I will talk about Viva Connection Extensibility Overviews. How do you work and create the extensibility cards for Viva Connection Dashboard? And Viva Connection, Dash, Viva Connection is part of the new Viva effort that is being built on top of Teams to be able to have new uh, functionalities and uh, experiences in Teams that the uh, target specific areas and specific workers. For River Connection specifically, uh, we are we have more than the dashboard. We have the dashboard, the feed, and the resources, and they are uh, solutions and experiences that have been created primarily for Teams and Teams Mobile, but they will also surface in the desktop uh, as well as in the pages uh, for SharePoint as modern pages and as a web part. Uh, in this slide, what you can see, you can see a mobile experience on the left, and then you can see an authoring experience in the center, and then how it will look like, uh, an example on how it will look like in modern pages, as well as in Teams desktop. And we will go through the uh, mobile experience and through the uh, dashboard authoring experience later during this uh, conversation. So in terms of Dashboard Connect, is basically uh, one of the solutions that have been built as part of Viva, and it, it gives you the ability to uh, provide access to applications and uh, uh, pages and resources that users normally uh, use during their day-by-day -day basis. So it's, as you can see, it's basically a solution that was built primarily for mobile and for Fortnite workers so, or for people that normally don't have a desk. So they need to be able to quickly access to applications that they use during the day-by-day -day job. Uh, there is an authoring experience that is very easy to customize and very easy to create. We'll go about that in a minute. Uh, it basically gives the ability to uh, link existing resources as well as through the power of SharePoint framework, able to create custom solutions that uh, users can use uh, in mobile or desktop. And because it is powered by SharePoint and modern pages technologies, you can also use features like audience targeting to be able to target specific cards to a specific set of users as part of your organization. Uh, in terms of the component of the dashboard, uh, Basically, you can have some kind of the areas where you can do customizations. You can comp customize the company logo, the nav bar, and the company name is something that you can configure at Teams level and then will surface everywhere. And then you can have multiple different set of cards inside of cards. Uh, right now, we'll start with two different templates, medium and large, but we will move forward to have more templates in the future based on the feedbacks and based on the evolution of the uh, technology of the dashboard itself. Uh, and as I said before, you, we will have a set of uh, uh, out-of-the-box card as well as the ability to create custom cards. So how do you assemble the dashboard? As the ability to create the dashboard and the uh, kind of operation and process to create the dashboard can be split across multiple people within the organization. Uh, on the left side, you have the configurations part of the story where the SharePoint and the Teams admin are working together to pick an on-site to where the dashboard will live and configure the Viva Connections application within Teams where you can set the corporate logo, the branding, and basically you can target the application in Teams to be available to a subset of users or all of your users. Then uh, you have the business, business units where basically is the one that are is selecting the uh, applications and is selecting the uh, functionalities that the dashboard will surface to different kind of users inside the organization. System integrators and ISVs can be involved to basically create the links to existing Teams application as well as custom cards. We'll talk about that in a second. And then the corporate communication uh, role is the one that is in charge of building the dashboard and create the dashboard by using the dashboard authoring tool. And in terms of dashboard authoring tool, it's a web-based tool, very similar to modern page authoring. You go uh, to a specific place in your home site, you select the dashboard, the dashboard gets created, and then from there, you can go and select uh, uh, existing uh, cards using a picker experience that is very similar to the web picker in modern pages. From there, you can select, put the picker in the card, and then you can configure the card uh, by using a property pane experience. 
And once you have provided some kind of information as part of your card, you will then be able to have the card available in the uh, mobile experience as well as a desktop and web. And from there, the card can have multiple functionalities. The card itself provides a quick glance of the information that the user can interact with or consume very quickly. The card can also give the ability to the user work configured to uh, deep dive in a quick view uh, experience where you have more a full body or a full video uh, real estate where additional information can be provided and additional level of interaction can be provided to the user itself. And then finally, where configured the, the card or the quick view can also point uh, to an external application that can be either a web page or a modern SharePoint page, an external link, as well as a Teams application. And we will go through this process a little bit later. So as I said before, uh, two different card size. Uh, you can customize actions by uh, provide capability of interaction to uh, card clicking as well as uh, button submit. Uh, icons can be customized. We can support dynamic values because this is powered by SharePoint framework. We'll talk about that in a second. You can add uh, different icons and different images, and we will provide some kind of out of the box card, just like the ability to link to SharePoint applications. Teams, personal apps and bots, as well as external links and other first party applications. And as I said before, because this is powered by uh, SharePoint publishing, uh, you will be able to target uh, audience targeting card so that you can uh, target different cards to different set of people as part of your organization. Uh, any questions so far or I can go with the demo? Um, let's actually do two questions. Uh, Vartaman uh, is asking, this will be released as part of the Teams mobile app itself, or how does it actually work? Yes, so the release is, will be like any other first party application. At one point, the Teams administrator will be will see Viva Connection as an app available in uh, their portfolio of applications provided by Microsoft. The Teams administrator will then be able to enable or disable the app for users, and when that happens, the app will surface in mobile and later this year in Teams desktop as well. So just to recap, it's not part of the Teams mobile app itself. It's a, a first-party additional application which we configure from an administrative perspective to be visible for our employees when they open up a Teams mobile. That is correct. Yes, just to recap on that. Uh, and then there's a question, what happens if we don't set a home site as part of the suggested step of, of setting it all up? I think the, the John answered that partly already, that, that it does it would mean that and then the Viva connection capabilities would not be available because they only work right now in the home site, correct? At least for the dashboard, that is correct. Uh, yep. Not sure about the resources and feed. I think they will still work, but for the dashboard, you absolutely need a home site. Good. Let's go to the demo. Cool. So let's talk about authoring the dashboard uh, and close and refresh. So this is the dashboard. The way I went here, just so you know, I go to my communication site and when the flight is enabled, I click on new, I click on dashboard and here it points me to the dashboard. You can see a blank canvas right now because there are no cards, but by the time I click edit, voila, I can see the dashboard here. Clicking add the card, I can see all the cards that are available here in a similar uh, way that you can also use for adding web in a mobile page. Uh, don't spend too much time analyzing what you're seeing here. There are a bunch of demos and this is a tenant that we're using for development. So some of these cards that you can see here will not be available for you by the time you join private beta. So uh, you will have Teams app, SharePoint pages, card designer, you will absolutely have web links and more tasks and all some of the other first party application when they are available. So let's start with a SharePoint page as an example. So I can add a SharePoint page. Here the card is ready. I can click. I have um, configuration experience, which is very similar to Mojan page of web part configuration. From here, I can select the card size and you can see that the card itself changed immediately. Uh, in, in the example of a SharePoint page, you can select which kind of site you want to go with. Here it is, see? So select the communication site, you can see that this can change, and then you can select a page here, 
and you can see that search will auto complete. And at the moment you select something, you automatically go and the card reflects your changes. You can also change the title and the description here. Uh, so you can incorporate. And you can say your connection. As you can see, things will change in real time. You can select the, the image. And then you can talk about audience targeting, where uh, we'll talk about that in a second, where you can go and target a specific card to a specific set of people. So from here, I can preview. When I'm in preview mode, if I click, you will see that the experience is that it will open and go directly to the uh, page that I pointed to by opening a new tab inside of my browser. So if I take a look at other cards, another card that I can use here, so I can close preview, I can add another card, I can use the Teams app. Teams app is a card that we built as a first party application or first party card to be able to make people uh, ready from the get-go without requiring uh, uh, customizations to create basically useful dashboard. And the purpose of the Teams app card is that you can connect uh, Teams uh, personal apps and bots directly to the card, uh, directly to the dashboard via the card. And basically the way that this does is once you select the card and you can search for an application, you can search for Tiny Pulse as an example, you will see that that will uh, pre-populate the information on the card based on what the uh, description and the title of the app has been set by the developer inside the Teams manifest. When you preview that, the way that the car behaves is basically act as a launcher for the Teams application. So for example, here for Tiny Pulse, uh, what will happen is that when I click, it will go and will open uh, uh, Teams. I am using the web app here for now because I am on the call, so I don't want to my Teams rich client to do something here. Uh, but basically what will happen is that it will open Teams and then it will point out directly to the application that is being set. So you can see here it lands the tiny pulse and I'm able to use here uh, directly from uh, the browser or the rich client, wherever I am. In case of the mobile, if I click on the card, it will open tiny pulse or whatever app I set on the mobile. The other interesting card that I want to talk about here is the close preview uh, card designer. And this is an interesting card that we created in order to be able to uh, create custom cards without using code as an option. So here, what I can do, I can use the power of adaptive card to be able to build a um, quick view experience on my card. So let's say, for example, that I've created this card. I call this uh, full court. I can put an icon that I have over here. See that it changes immediately. I can put text and description. Uh, uh, um, oh, sorry. Select. Uh, menu, let's put something like that. Uh, I can select a card action, so it means that I can say that the card uh, can do something when I click on the card or do nothing. In this case, I want to do nothing because I want to have a button that is, uh, I can put this case view. And when I, put, when I put the button, uh, what I want to do, I want to go to a link or I want to show a quick view. For the lack of, for this example, I can, I want to have a quick view. Uh, so I can select over here and what you can see here is that I can basically use adaptive card to build my quick view experience without being a developer. And how will I do that? I will go to the adaptive car designer uh, and I will be able from here to uh, select one of these options. So for example, let's say that I want this card as an option. And from here, I can copy this and I can put that in my uh, template JSON. Let me go one more time here. Sorry. Yes. So I go here, I go to the template, I put this, then I go back on the data, I select the data, and I go back here. Let me move Vesa out and put the data here. 
And then from now, when I click on preview, what you can see is that if I click on the button, yay, I will have exactly the same experience that I would have had here in the card. And this gives the ability to uh, users to be able to build card uh, without uh, using custom code, without using SPFX. Uh, it's kind of an alternative for scenarios where you need to create something quick without, and you don't have a developer environment, or you don't have a developer handy that you can use to build some kind of solutions for the card, for the, for the dashboard. One last thing that I want to show is the um, audience targeting. So as I was saying, you can target card to different set of users by using a publishing audience targeting feature. So, and what happened here is that if I select a card, just like the full court card here, I can select one of the groups that I have up as part of this uh, tenancy. And the cool features that we built over here is that when you select the group and you go to preview, now you can see that there is a new select audience to preview as that gives you the ability to see what will happen if you are a different set of users. So for example, here you can see that I only see two cards, but if I select test as a group, voila, I can see that every person that will be part of this, uh, of, the, of this group will have this experience when you go to the dashboard. If you're not part of this group, you will see that that's what you see. So then I can close the preview, I can go here, I can remove, and I can republish. And that's it from my side. John, do you want to go and uh, demo the dashboard? Yes. Sorry, do you want to um, maybe field some questions while I'm trying to get this? Yeah, up? sure. Sorry. I think Simon Simon was looking for pizza. Uh, how does that work? Um, so uh, <laughs> you showed the food sample. Come on, you're missing. I see, the <laughs> but it's 7:35 here. I was looking more for a croissant. Yes, sure. Um, so uh, there was a question related on uh, uh, licensing, uh, uh, which says right now the, the connections, we have connections, what we're showing in these demos do not require any licensing. Uh, so it's part of your SharePoint and Microsoft Teams licensing model. So that's, I believe that's good to this know. is true as long as you are at least E3. But uh, yeah, sure. Don't sure. quote me on that. Yeah. Yes. But it, it's we're not requiring you to do additional investments on this. Um, also, a good note: uh, uh, you can get access already on the early bits and features and functionalities as long as you sign into the uh, uh, preview program, and we'll then enable the features. And this is basically designed for you to get early access. If you're a uh, MVP or a person who does videos or demos on conferences, you can already demo this stuff as well. So, and there is no NDA. Uh, for any of that, um, so you'll get access on bits as long as you register that URL, which is in the chat right now, and we'll show that one again uh, slightly later. So while we're waiting for John, another thing I want to talk about oh, here is availability. That's a good question. Sorry, Luca. Uh, does the card web part work outside of the Viva? Can we use it to create a card dashboard on a regular SharePoint sites? That's a good question. So, Andy. so should. Very interesting question, slightly different questions. So I will start tackling the later. Uh, so yes, we are building the ability to surface the dashboard in modern pages outside of uh, Viva Connections. There are still discussions in place if we are only showing the dashboard on your home site or your corporate site, or if we show the dashboard anywhere else but the dashboard, it's something that you will be able to put in modern pages in SharePoint. Uh, for the other question, which is, uh, can I also put a card, yay, John, works. Can I also put a card outside of the dashboard in a page similar to what I can do with web parts? This is something that we are actively considering. Uh, no decision has been made right now, but uh, it's one of the options that we are considering for cards. Uh, to be also uh, alive and visible in pages outside of the dashboard. Cool. I, I have the two comments. There's questions related on the preview still on the chat. So just to recap, uh, you will need to sign up for the preview URL, which is now in the chat uh, and will be shown in the slides pretty soon as well. It will be in the recording summary tomorrow in a blog post as well to be able to get access on early bits which is SharePoint Framework 1.13, and that we are able to enable this preview functionality within your tenant because we need your URL uh, to be able to do that. And the, the second good comment from uh, Tim Duncan is, uh, me, shut up and take my money. Microsoft, no, 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 we don't need it. Thank you. 
So it's all for free. So good. Uh, so let's go to John to your demo. Yeah. So Luca uh, showed the dashboard on the web, um, and so now I'm going to show the dashboard as part of the team's um, mobile app. Um, so this will not be available as part of the the private preview, um, but we do expect it to hopefully be available broadly uh, later this year. Um, no specific timeline on that yet. And so, like we've mentioned, uh, Viva Connections will be available just as a Teams app. So that means that you'll be able to pin it. Um, and be, if you're a Teams admin, be able to do all the sort of automatic pinning as well. Um, and we'll have branding support. So for a lot of people, um, the organizations, the app itself may not ever surface as Viva Connections. Um, and will hopefully surface as the, the organization's name um, and brand. And so we'll see all the cards that Luca had already added um, onto the dashboard, it'll be a lot of the same functionality. I can go to the Tiny Pulse. I can go deep link into the Tiny Pulse app. Similarly, I can deep link into all sorts of other apps as well um, and go right back into my dashboard. And so this is a great place to um, put all the different types of um, various functionality across teams uh, into one location and also have the ability to access uh, quick snippets of, of info. Um, so, for example, Luca's food cart, uh, food port card. I can go and interact with that as well, um, and you'll see that I get this rich um, experience, just like I did on the web. What's kind of pretty interesting um, about this whole setup is that this is actually being rendered using um, React Native, and so you're able to actually extend um, the Teams app uh, natively um, using the same JavaScript code that you're writing um, currently with adapting card extensions um, on the web, and so. As a developer, a lot of this is really transparent, and we do a bunch of heavy lifting um, to be able to have it render um, natively on the web uh, and on the mobile app. Yep. Cool. Thanks a lot, John.